Hi, this is Bill. I was looking at some videos yesterday on forecasting uh, future predictions, and one was from Steve Jobs from 1985. It's called uh, Steve Jobs Lost uh, Video. Another one was um, from Steve Wozniak at Promat. People were asking questions about where the technologies are going in the next 10 years. So I... I like the research is kind of out of curiosity. Sometimes I'll have a dream about something that somebody else is working on in development or just a good, sometimes I'll have a good um, feeling for where somebody is as, as far as their personal experiences. I'll give you an example. Steve Jobs said when he came back to Apple, he told the employees, Johnny Ives and everybody to create something that they could use, something that was useful. So... Uh, if you look at the, the first prediction is going to be on the Apple watch. If you look at the Apple watch, um, as it's coming out and some of these things won't be able to come out because products in the medical field, they have to undergo testing before they can be used and get approval from the food and drug administration and all that. So the Apple watch is going to have a heart rate monitor on it. Like when it comes out, it's going to have the heart rate monitor. Uh, the two devices they're working on will be IoT devices. One is going to be a to monitor people's insulin level for people with diabetes, and the other one that people aren't aware about is going to be to tell if people have cancer. So a lot of times um, people with cancer, they'll have uh, protein markers in their blood or their urine. And so the Apple Watch, at some point, and it's kind of like all these things that Steve Jobs talked about in the past. If Apple can invest and develop the technology, then Apple Watch will be able to tell if people have cancer and what kind of cancer they have. And um, the best treatment for that kind of cancer, some cancers react better to radiation or chemotherapy and some cancers don't. Uh, most, most cancers, the best way to treat cancer is to get it cut out. They usually have a margin and depending on how aggressive the cancer is, the margin can be smaller or larger. And that's the first step. And then sometimes they'll want to do a follow-up. Uh, one of the things that Steve Jobs did before he died and cancer runs in my family is he had his DNA sequenced. And there's a company, you can go research it, that looks into how uh, it'll sequence your cancer and find out what are the best treatments for your cancer. So, I mean, that's an emerging technology. It's already in place, but you have to have the money for it. So, a working class person like me, they can't afford this, but somebody who works for a government and they have a high grade level or a politician or an entrepreneur can afford this. Now, it wasn't something Steve Jobs could afford. He died three years ago, and this all cost $100,000. And and somebody I know had this done last year, it wasn't me, and it cost $1,500. So the is uh, one of the notes I have here is Steve Waz said that changes come slowly. I mean, that's something that they see in the tech field, but what actually happens is they come incrementally. And then uh, he has talked about Moore's Law a lot. What happens is typically the prices will come down. So the technology will get better and the prices will come down. So, um, you know, incidentally, I, the, this first thing I'm just talking about, Apple Watch. But in the next 10 years, the technologies for these things will come down in price. <laughs> And eventually cancer will become something like polio or smallpox. Analytics, big data, uh, AI. Uh, analytics is something that's very helpful for a technical person. You can find like-minded people who will uh, have similar ideas or similar things they were working on and something that's circulating in England right now But it's a problem here in the US is called the priority poll and the priorities poll seeks to eliminate 90% of people in public office Based on commonality. So you have different parties Republicans Democrats and in England. It's called the the social they have a social workers party and they have a loyalist party 
And all these parties, all these parties have one thing in common. They're mostly made up of old rich white men. <laughs> so uh, anal analytics is helpful for people who are researching maybe something for uh, the priorities poll. And it can help a, a little person help find people who are interested in simple things. In other words, the filtering, filtering mechanism for analytics will bring the data to you. It, it's no longer you're looking for the data. You're generating analytics and the data comes to you. <clears throat> so that's number two. Number three is on drones. We'll see more government <laughs> surveillance right now. We're not seeing it. You'll see these little hover drones pretty soon in the future uh, flying around and spying on people. And then, but uh, people are making their own drones and uh, companies want to invest in drones. Like, and that leads us right into battery development, which is number four. Uh, right now, big corporations are uh, employment poaching battery developers and um, seeing who can have the most technically advanced batteries okay you talk about a battery like lithium ion batteries and capacity and they say people say well they're at 90 percent capacity well if you go to a, a like a nanocarbon matrix battery guess what your capacity is going to quadruple or double so yeah you might be at 90 capacity now but you know uh as the new batteries technologies come along the batteries will be smaller the same size and you might have double or quadruple the power. So if you have an electric car with the same potential capacity, instead of 300 miles, you'll be driving 600 or 900 or 1200 miles with the same battery. If you have a phone, uh, your phone might be paper thin and still have the same uh, battery life as the iPhone 6. So like uh, iPhone 6 is 2 millimeters smaller than the iPhone 5. The iPhone 7 might be 2 millimeters smaller and have the same battery capacity. And these are all things that are going to happen in the next 10 years. I've called it your IT fortune. It's like going to the fortune teller to get your fortune told. So you can look at this later and say this came true or this didn't come true or whatever. IoT. Uh, all of this stuff. The, I, the IT fortune, the top 10 predictions over the next 10 years. I kind of, like I said, I kind of watch these things on my own, but I developed a website, I bought a website developed called applemothership.com. And this website is based on Steve Jobs' final work at Apple. Uh, I'm not trying to cyber squat on Apple uh, per se. Uh, more like, this is more kind of a review of everything Steve Jobs was doing in his final months. And it will culminate somewhere around the year, end of the year 2016 with the completion of the Campus 2 headquarters in Cupertino, California. And the building's being built in the USA. It'll house 20,000 workers. And um, out of these 20,000 workers, they'll be designing products here. And some of the products will be manufactured here and parts of certain products will be manufactured here and so that's a great uh thing for innovation uh innovation's been kind of dead in the u.s and it'll really help innovation and by the way i never got to be an engineer because uh i have really good math skills but engineers they have really phenomenally fantastic math skills so my math is here and an engineer, their math is up here somewhere. I fall a little short. I really have to struggle with math to be good at it. And there's just certain things that I fall short. I'm really terrible at calculus. <laughs> I could do algebra real well. Calculus, uh, I don't even want to know calculus. I, I, do it. I do it a little bit. I hate it. Uh, okay, so um, IoT, Hidden Products and Development. There's a hidden market in the internet of things people are talking about how practical it is and there's things that haven't even been discovered yet that are going to come out this is this will be the the one thing in the list that's kind of like that'll sneak up people and take them by surprise uh usually changes come incrementally uh when i researched this people were talking about the money that was involved and whether or not it was beneficial and somebody said uh kicked around a carbon monoxide iot detector in your house 
and act, uh, asked if it was, whether or not it was practical. And you talk about something that could potentially prevent uh, an, a, a somebody's death and <laughs> unknowingly, and they ask if it's if a product that could potentially save a life has any benefit. <laughs> And there's going to be things in IoT like the smart water meters that are complete waste. You get into automation and stuff like that. Robots. In the 1980s, uh, it was predicted that we'd all have a robot house cleaner in the 1990s. Here it is 30 years later. I don't, ha I don't know anybody that has a robot. You buy a little robot for $300 that'll sweep the floor and do a half-assed job. Uh, Self-driving cars. Um, we'll see self-driving cars at car shows and expositions and certain environments like that. But uh, we won't see a lot of self-driving cars. They're going to be very expensive at first. The liability will be high. And then as people feel safer with them, we will see more and more self-driving cars. And it'll be something just rich people have. But like people who have a drinking problem or whatever, this uh, they could have this take them to the bar and if there's no parking, the car can go home and then they can call the car on their phone later and it'll come pick them up. AIs, uh, AIs are already being used in the government and the military to figure out strategies for fighting certain wars and we'll see AIs more than that. We'll start to see artificial intelligence in schools maybe acting as cheerleaders to find out like what s certain students need work in and to help give math assignments. That's a maybe. That might be 20 years down the road. And 3D printers. 3D printers is going to be another thing kind of like IoT that will be kind of hidden on the side. 3D printers are going to come down in price in the next 10 years. You'll see 3D printers drop to like maybe two or $300. People will be getting 3D printers in their home and the other will be able to print like a wall plate or whatever. But we'll also see... Um, Things like uh, it's already been used where people are printing 3D hands for people, kids with missing hands or whatever, and a limb that costs, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars to make in a lab, and somebody can make it for practically free at home and just have to assemble it. And just all kinds of hidden benefits in being able to design a product. Anybody will be able to design a product and print it in their home. If you think about something like a small robot, like a robot dog or something, okay, those things are made out of pieces, so eventually people will be able to figure out how to print small robots and just the pieces, the arms and the legs, and then they'll be able to go online and buy servos and put all the things together, and you'll start to see strange things happen with 3D printers where people will start building robots and things in their homes and then... And then It'll be a home market for, for 3D printers. Somebody's going to figure out how to make a two or three. It'll be like Kodak or maybe even Apple, although I don't think Apple's working on it. And and, and the, my final prediction is kind of sad. When Steve Jobs came back to Apple, that he didn't know if they could save the company. I've been watching a lot of Steve Jobs videos. He didn't know if he'd be able to save the company. He just tried. They, it was a possibility that Apple would have failed back in 1998 so Apple is either going to get really really big or they're going to turn into a company like HP and just kind of fade out of existence and um, if Apple turns into a company like HP they'll just be making I, I don't really think of them as a company that creates um, products that are insanely great they just create products that can compete and the employees work real hard on the products uh, but if they started making products that were constantly had chipped with bad motherboards and people, they got a bad reputation because Steve Jobs wasn't there to fire the bad employees, then Apple will kind of turn into a company that can't compete if they could develop all these products that they're working on under Apple mothership, like the new batteries, and they can budget a... R&D, if they could set up an R&D budget that will, um, like they have a certain amount set aside for R&D, and the products come out, and some of them fail, and some of them succeed, which will happen, then Apple will stick around. But uh, that's my last prediction, and I hope you enjoyed my top 10 predictions for the next 10 years.